uh, we're going to keep it fairly brief today. In some ways, I think um, uh, this week we have perhaps more clarity than we had at this time uh, last week around A-level results, so we will keep it fairly, uh, fairly brief. Um, as you can see, all of you are muted um, to, uh, to, to keep sound um, to a minimum. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, we go through them, please do use the chat function and ask questions there. Uh, and my colleagues, um, Angelina, um, Director of Education, um, and EJ, um, who's on the Relationship Management Team, uh, will be able to ask on your behalf um, as we go through. Um, so um, first of all, you know, how much has changed in a week? Um, obviously, at this point, uh, last week, things were looking very, very different. Um, I don't need to tell any of you at all, of course, that now, with both A-levels and GCSEs, um, the highest of the test grades or the calculator grades will be awarded to the students as their final grade uh, tomorrow. Um, obviously, this time last week, we had the, the announcement on the Tuesday, now, Tuesday night about the mock uh, grades counting as a basis for appeals. That seems to have all but disappeared, presumably because um, centre assessed grades will always, um, or in most cases, higher um, than mock grades. Um, but on that point, we haven't had the finalisation of the other grounds for appeals in the, the GCC and A-level process. Um, again, I think that's probably because uh, for most schools, um, those grounds for appeals won't be as significant because of the the, the, uh, the central assessed grades, but more on that later. Um, and so by this point, hopefully you have received all of your data, you've checked it over and it looks right, i.e. you've got, um, for most of you, what will be the central assessed grades uh, of your students. And in some cases that might be slightly higher where the algorithm has produced a higher result. Uh, you also should have received or will receive within the next hour the revised A-level data, which has been sent to schools um, today. Um, so some potential outstanding issues um, that we have around this. Well, it's interesting in the media, there's been this um, sort of great hope, I think, that um, centre assessed grades are the way to go, and that it's a lot fairer to students. And in some ways, um, that's true. Um, however, the flip side of that uh, is that the emphasis now for any kind of um, appeals or any, um, uh, any sort of anger at results will now be directed, unfortunately, more at schools than at some kind of, um, uh, sort of unknown algorithm of quality example. So now it, it's, it's become, I think, much more personal than it had done, uh, than it had been previously. So, um, I think, that's, I think that's a real, real challenge. Um, I think also, as a result of that, there is great potential for more requests for that personal data. So yes, students will get their centre assessed uh, assess grades tomorrow uh, through the normal channels. However, if they are unhappy with the grade that, that you gave them as a school, I think there is greater scope for those data subject action requests where they ask what the process was by which um, uh, you as a school arrived at that result. Uh, and of course, we have a, a huge issue um, with A-level um, with all of this, with the ongoing saga of university admission. And we know that there are um, <clears throat> some students who are taking deferred places, but that will impact the number of places available to the current year 12s who are already at a massive disadvantage because they've missed so much of this, uh, their A-levels halfway through. Um, so again, I think, although we have greater clarity at this point uh, in time than we did last week, there are still some, some key issues uh, to, to talk about. Um, I apologise if you can hear some, some beeping in the background. I've tried to put of that. It's as people enter. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that's happening. Um, so I apologise if, if you can hear that. Um, so thinking about tomorrow and the fact that on Monday we had this announcement that, that you know, definitely CAGS uh, would, would um, uh, would be in place for tomorrow morning uh, for results day. So um, some key considerations we think uh, that, that are useful uh, if you haven't already, just to think through um, tomorrow and, and, and I'm sure that you're all on top of this already. Um, but you know, having a really clear statement to the school and the narrative about how centre assessed grades were arrived at. 
Um, and I think being clear that center assessed grades are not necessarily the same as teacher predictions. Um, you know, this was a different process to, um, for example, the, the UCAS teacher prediction process. Um, and I think having all staff with that narrative, any staff that are going to be talking to students tomorrow, any staff that are coming in for results day or are making themselves available virtually uh, on results day, making sure that everyone's talking uh, in the same way about how central assessed grades were arrived at. I think a lot of people um, in education are getting quite irritated by the mainstream media who are talking about teacher grades or teacher predictions. Um, and of course, that's not what we're talking about here. Um, it's not, it wasn't a teacher's own decision. This was a rigorous process that you would have gone through as a department, as a school, uh, and that your head teacher or you as head teacher will have signed off. So I think being really, really clear uh, with, with students and parents tomorrow that center assessed grades are not the same as teacher predictions, and it's not about the teacher. It's about the um, uh, it's about the whole process and that whole moderation process that you went through as a school. Um, and with that in mind, I think it's it's important that, that we have a really clear and transparent process for students who are unhappy with their centre assess grade. So, of course, we have the we had the appeals process in theory. That's now sort of gone out the window because the emphasis is on uh, centre assess grades. So, again, having that process as a school about how you will deal with that. And I think, you know, as, as most of you on this call are, are senior leaders, kind of protecting classroom teachers from potential abuse and harassment and making sure any questions about how that grade was arrived at um, goes through a, a one channel and a clear channel, whether that's through heads of department, whether it's through senior leaders, um, but what, you know, the situation we don't want is individual students or individual parents contacting classroom teachers demanding to know why they were given a particular grade. There should be a very clear process <clears throat> for any questions of that nature. Of course, the other, the other thing to think about in terms of this narrative and the statement is, um, I know some schools that I've spoken to over the last two days um, spent a lot of time matching um, the central grades that were given to their previous data. And of course, if that's the case, then perhaps um, you will have encouraged teachers to, to uh, to try and make it as close to previous years as possible. So again, that might form part of your narrative and that's not, a, that's not a bad thing. That was the framework that we were working within at the time uh, back in, in May. So again, just being clear about what we did as a school to reach those um, to show that, that point. <clears throat> I think um, if you do have questions tomorrow, just a, a reminder, there is no way in which students or parents can appeal directly against the center assess grade or the rank order. That is not part of the appeals process and it won't be. I'm going to say that <laughs> so much has changed, but I think it's highly unlikely it will be. Instead, students can make a malpractice complaint if they think there has been bias against them in the, the process of reaching that center assess grade. So what constitutes malpractice? Well, again, it's not an appeal, so it doesn't have the usual time frames of an appeal. Uh, all appeals have got to be in uh, by mid-September. That's not the case for malpractice allegations. Uh, if a student thinks they have been biased against um, and that it has been exam malpractice, they should first of all discuss that with the school. And again, there should be a clear process by which students can do that if they think that's the case. I think, you know, Obviously, what we want to avoid is students just saying, well, you know, I don't get on with that teacher and he or she gave me a, a bad mark because they don't like me. You know, that, that is not grounds for malpractice. There has to be very, very clear evidence of exam malpractice. For example, a student being able to prove that through internal assessments, whether that's mocks or whether it's classwork, that they can prove they've been consistently given uh, a level seven, a grade seven, uh, but then in the center assess grades, they've been given a grade three or four, that would be clear evidence of that. But again, um, you know, when you're having these discussions with students, being clear that just having a poor relationship between student and teacher is not grounds for a malpractice complaint. There needs to be very, very clear evidence um, that the student has that they've been discriminated against. And of course, um, with all of this, you know, where students are still unhappy, even when you've explained that to them, uh, with the, the, the results they got, we still 
in theory, have the autumn series going ahead for all subjects in both GCSE and A-level. Uh, it's only available for students that were entered this summer. Um, so you, you can't enter additional students in uh, the autumn series. Um, £30 million has been made available um, for the autumn series, and that's to cover the costs of the, the entries, to cover the costs of um, invigilators and uh, increased staff time, and to cover the costs of hiring a venue um, if you need to do that um, uh, to allow for, for proper social distancing uh, and, and public health. Um, I think with the changes that we now have with centre assess grades being allowed, I think the numbers are going to be very, very small, particularly for GCSE. Uh, and as I've been saying, you know, all along during this process, I think, um, you know, we should discourage students from entering the autumn series unless there is a very good reason. You know, a student who just feels they could have done a bit better, um, it's just going to disrupt their next phase of study, whether we're talking about post-16 or post-18. It's, it's, it's really not in people's interest if they've moved on uh, to the next phase of education. Um, as usual, anyone on the post-16 course um, who didn't achieve a grade four in English or maths um, will need to reset that as normal. Um, obviously, that will be now through centre uh, center of SES grades rather than through the exam. But again, that will be part of the condition of funding for post-16. Uh, and really, um, I mean, that's sort of all, all I've got to say about the, about the GCSEs and A-levels because um, with this, this new term, um, there is actually so much more clarity. And, and speaking to many of you today, you've got your grades through and, and it looks as you expect them to. Um, so really just before the end of summer, just to, to update you with a, a few pieces of other educational policy news. Um, it, it, interesting that Sean Harford, who's the director of uh, studies, the director of education, uh, he's been seconded to the Department for Education until the end of the year uh, to help with school reopening. So an important secondment there, again, placing a real emphasis on, on how much governments are keen to get all students back all the time. Uh, talking about Ofsted, those Ofsted visits will start um, in September with some trial visits which will then be rolled out to, um, to more schools in October. It's expected that all inadequate schools will be inspected between September, so it will be visited between September and December, uh, and a handful of RI good and outstanding schools as well. And that the focus of those visits really will be um, on how you are getting students back how you are uh, catching up with your curriculum. And then the full Section 5 and Section 8 Austin inspections are due to start from January. Uh, you might have heard in the news that Keir Starmer has joined, um, uh, joined his, his uh, Conservative rivals and saying that he expects all schools to be reopened to all students in September. I know all of you are planning to do that, uh, but just you know, to, to emphasize there is very much cross-party consensus about all students going back and that any non-attendance is, is registered as such. Uh, and finally, you know, one of the things that a lot of you have been in touch uh, with me about over the last week or so is to say you have a number of staff who um, are going to have to quarantine as a result of um, the changes to the, the Airbridge countries, particularly a lot of staff over in France who are now having to, um, to quarantine. So, um, Again, just something to consider uh, when you're planning um, for that, that September opening, how many staff you might have who need to quarantine. Um, as I said, that, that's it from me this afternoon because it, 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 really is, um, it, it really is much more simple, I think, than it was last week. Um, but Angelina or EJ, I can mm -hmm. see there have been a couple of comments um, in the chat box. Have we got any questions mm -hmm. or points of clarification? Just a couple of quick things, Tom, on around BTEX, um, where people are asking um, whether there's any clarity around BTEC appeals. Um, uh, one school has uh, said that they've had 16 out of 17 of their BTEC performing arts students who have gone down a grade by at least one. Uh, and yeah, somebody else responding that they've also experienced quite a lot of um, BTEC downgrading from edXL Pearsons as well. So the question is about whether we know anything about um, clarity about BTEC appeals. Um, the, the simple answer is no. Um, absolutely right that BTECs um, have been downgraded more. They're not 
um, they're not using the centre assess grades in the same way as they are for general qualifications. Um, I uh, tried to clarify the appeals process with Pearson earlier today, um, and they don't yet know what that will be. Um, so again, we'll just have to hold tight on the appeals for BTEX, but um, it, it, it's definitely the, another big issue that's still there. And that's it. There are no other questions or comments, Tom. Okay. Well, I mean, as I said, I think um, with the, the U-turn, um, it, it has been um, uh, a lot more simple. And, and hopefully you're finding uh, that the two you've had in today is, is all, is all um, correct in terms of certainly general qualifications um, anyway. Um, so really, just I just wanted to say um, thank you to all of you for joining me this afternoon and for those that have joined me uh, throughout this uh, throughout this lockdown and these policy updates. Uh, as some of you know and some of you don't know, um, this Friday will be my final day at SSAT. Um, and so um, it's a sort of goodbye from me. This is the last time um, I'll be speaking to, to the SSAT network, which is, is very, very sad for me. Um, but, but thank you for all your support and all your, your questions and comments um, uh, and, and for the way in which you, you share ideas and, and, and help each other as well. Um, please do continue to do that. You can get continued support from SSAT through the relationship management team uh, on RM team, ssatuk.co.uk. Um, if you'd like to stay in touch with me personally, um, you can contact me in my new role at ASCL on tom.millhurst at ASCL.org.uk. Um, and all that remains for me to say really is it's been a really, really difficult year. Um, I hope over the last uh, five weeks you found some time to, um, to relax and to recharge your batteries. Um, I know that the next two weeks are going to be very difficult as you prepare to, to reopen to all students uh, with a full timetable. Um, so I wish you um, the very best of luck uh, in the next two weeks for next year uh, and in the future. Thank you.